What's up YouTube, it's JB Tech Fanatic and I'm back again with another video. As always, I'd like to start this video by thanking each of you for joining me. If you have not yet subscribed, I'd be so honored if you would consider. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you wanna know when the latest content is available, don't forget to click the notifications to on. Today we are back with my favorite category. That is TVs. Now, pretty much since the beginning, I have purchased each of Samsung's 8K TVs, but I have yet to review one. The true reason behind that was I was unsure if it was really time to proclaim that everyone should buy an 8K TV. And don't get me wrong, you don't have to buy an 8K TV by any means, but that's about to change. Obviously the future is 8K. Now there's not a lot of 8K content, so you can say, JB Tech Fanatic, why would I want an 8K TV? First and foremost, you get top of the line features and specs. These TVs are seriously no joke. And because they've now been out for several years, the price points have gotten more affordable. Don't get me wrong, they're still up there in price. But the best part about it is the AI technology that up converts your standard 4K signals to 8K just keeps getting better. Of course, it's not native 8K, but when you put it all together, you might start to think, hmm, it might be time to grab an 8K TV. Thus, I give you the all new Samsung QN800B. Now, this is the second tier model in Samsung's 8K line. Samsung did release a OLED OLED TV this year. However, their top tier TVs are actually their 8K series. Now, if you go with the QN900, you are essentially almost getting double the specs, if you would. But for people like you and I, this TV fires on all cylinders, giving you all the features and specs above and beyond that you will need and it does it at what i think is a pretty decent price point so we're going to go through the unboxing setup my picture settings gaming i'm going to cover it all obviously it's going to take us a couple videos to do that so grab your unboxing knife and let's get started first thing we're going to do is go ahead and cut the top straight across take out the accessories Pro tip, check out the cool things that you can do with the Samsung packaging. You can turn it into different things like cat houses and random things to recycle. But go ahead, pull out all your accessories, grab two people, and let's yank this box off. Go ahead and lay out all the accessories. Make sure that everything that you need is in the box. We are now flipped around to the back side. What we're going to want to do at this point is go ahead and put together the stand and attach it to the TV before we put it in place. Leave the bottom on, but let's go ahead and pull out this foam. Now go ahead and rip out a little area so that we can go ahead and attach the bracket once we put it together. At this point, we need the three pieces to the stand, and you also are going to need a Phillips screwdriver or a drill. Also, just an FYI, the screws that you're going to need are with each piece. If you're wondering, this is what we're about to do. We're going to put A, B, and C together. This will be the bottom piece. You'll know that one, it's extremely heavy, heavy, excuse me, and this one has the four rubber feet. Go ahead and set the base plate down as so. Then grab this piece here and you're gonna see that it has a slit. You're just going to slide it right in. Now again, we're gonna to have to run the screws. Now that it's properly aligned, four screws go in with ease. Once you set them in, go ahead and tighten them down. As you can see, we got the screws.
Make sure they're nice and tug. You should now be able to lift this up and it not slide out. Again, make sure those are fastened down. You don't want to take a chance of your TV falling. We are now moving on to the TV. We are going to attach this piece directly to the TV. Again, the hardware is at the bottom. Few things to note, we have a total of four screws. They will fit perfectly. Don't accidentally try to go for the mounting areas. Of course, it won't work. But you don't want to over tighten, but you want to tighten them all the way down. Make them flush. We got one, two, three, four. Also, look how this is shaped. Make sure that this sort of angle is facing down. This little hook area is what's going to hook onto the mount, or sorry, the stand. Now we can kind of see. We got this area here, and it's going to hook up there on that hook. You should have four more screws left over that were on the back of one of these items. So next trick here, we want to pull this piece out and it's gonna give us the room we need. Now we have it out, let's go ahead and put it on. Now we've got it into position, we're gonna go ahead and lift this and lock it. Remember, bottom of the stand is going under facing the front of the TV. You gotta give it a good push and it's going to actually snap. This needs to be snapped into place before you put in the rest of the um, screws to secure. Another thing to take note, you're not looking for it to have an empty hole to know you're lined up. What you're looking for is this sort of little brown colored cloth, if you would. The screws are actually gonna go into each one of those ports. So we got four total. And again, don't forget to buckle everything down. couple tips to help you. First, screw in the top two screws first or the bottom will not tighten. Second thing is, if you put the top two in first and they still won't tighten, go ahead and remove the rest of the packaging and let the TV sit on the stand and then it will flush it out and they'll tighten. If this is the option you're going to use, I just wanted to give you a quick look. Go ahead, plug the one connect cable into the box right here. Of course, your power and all of your HDMI's also need to be plugged in. Samsung gives you this piece to make it look flush and cover everything up. Really just snaps on, but kind of that's what it'll look like there. Let's move on. So let's move on. Now, I apologize about this mess here. I just threw this on my dresser for now to get this video going for you. Um, I wanted to show you one thing again. Now, I showed you this connected. This is if you are going to have your one connect box right on your stand. If not, uh, and originally I thought this could be adapted to the one connect cable. It's either this or your one connect cable. So I'm gonna use the one connect cable. As you can see, I just plugged it in now. And also, I wanted to point out on the back of this TV, this has a very different texture. It almost feels like paper, and I noticed that there's a lot of ventilation going around it. And I know that this has some built-in speakers, of course, so I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. In other words, you don't have to really worry about scratching this, but it almost is it's it's almost as if you get splinters when you rub your fingers across just to keep an eye on that when you're using your mount if you're going to mount it you're going to hear things crack and pop it's not the screen it's actually this material don't over tighten i just thought i would mention that so you're aware all right so now we're looking at the one connect box first thing you need to do is go ahead and plug in the one connect cable Remember, the one connect cable is really the only thing that will be going to the TV. There is no power cable. Everything runs through that. The power cable will be in the one connect box. Here you can see we have four HDMI ports. Number three is where you're going to put your Dolby Atmos surround sound system through eARC. If you have a console like the Xbox Series X and you want to run 120 frames with HDMI 2.1, run that to HDMI 4. Then we have USB here on the right side, and then we have two on the left side. In case you are wondering, 
First, let me say, if you have not invested in HDMI 2.1 cables, now is definitely the time if you have this TV. I have my Dish Network in HDMI 1. I have my PlayStation 5 in HDMI 2. I have my Bose Soundbar 900 in the eARC, and then my Xbox Series X in the HDMI 4. I also wanted to point out that the One Connect cable is very thick. Um, I know that there's been many that are you know really small this is not one of them however it is still paintable it carries a heck of a signal through there so you're getting a ton of bandwidth going through there um, you could still paint it put it on the wall and then maybe spare yourself a professional install or having to go through dropping things through the wall even if you do have to drop something it would be just this one cable still an awesome feature i love the one connect box we have our EX link here. We have our coaxial analog connection here. We still have an optical connection and they give us an ethernet plug if you wanna hardwire um, your one connect box to your modem or router. I went ahead and I turned the one connect box. Here you can see the power cable. It has a nice channeling system here. This is a removable power cord. And again, this is the only power source for the whole TV. We're looking directly at the top of the One Connect box just to show you it has that beautiful finish, blends in perfectly with the TV. Overall, nice slim profile, actually looks sort of like a Blu-ray player, but it is, you know, larger size as far as a square, but again, I still love it. So now we are just about ready to get this thing going. Remember, everything should be plugged into your One Connect box and powered on whether it be a game console, cable box, a dish box, Blu-ray player, it doesn't matter. Make sure it's all plugged in, powered on. And the last thing we're gonna do before we start, top left-hand corner, yes, there is a protective film on this screen that peels off. Simply grab the tab and pull. This is the best part. Soon we will see this beautiful 8K screen. Just look at that beautifulness. Wow. What a difference, right? Get that plastic off. Time to begin setup. You're going to need to know your Wi Fi password. You can either use your Samsung Galaxy phone or the One Remote or any Android or Apple phone using Samsung SmartThings. Today we're going to go ahead and just use our One Remote. Everything is plugged in via HDMI. All of your devices are powered on as well as your sound system. Let's go ahead and select remote control and move on. As you can see, Start Auto Setup is ready because everything is connected and powered on. Go ahead and click Start Auto Setup. It's going to search for your Wi-Fi. Go ahead and put your password in here. Now press Go. Wireless connection is successful. Next, we are looking at our Smart Hub terms and conditions. Now, whether you agree to this or not is going to give you different features. This is completely up to you. Just know that you do not have to agree to all. Definitely recommend viewing the details and seeing what is, you know, what you're comfortable with. Select or skip and let's move on. Now it's gonna check for an update. We have a software update. We're gonna to wanna to do that right away, so go ahead and click now. Depending on your speed, this will take different amount of times. Whatever you do, do not unplug or disconnect your router during the middle of it. Let it finish. That way you don't run into any issues. Waiting, 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 almost done. Don't worry, it powers off, then it powers on, and it takes you right back to the next step. You definitely want to sign in to your Samsung account. If you don't have one, I highly recommend getting one. 
This is going to help you with your apps, your smart settings, and of course, warranty and all of that good stuff. This will be the next step after you sign in. Now you have the option to restore and backup. Again, this is completely up to you. I do this. If you ever have to reset your TV, it makes it just so much easier. I already have some Samsung TVs, of course, so it's restoring everything for me. Now it shows you what devices are connected with your one remote. I have Dish, so it's going to allow me to control it. Now you get to choose what voice assistant you want to use. This is nice because they give you three to choose from. It's not just Bixby anymore. So we got Alexa or Google. Go ahead and choose your favorite. I selected Google and as you can see, I'm going to have to sign in later. So it says once we're done setting up, we're going to hit the voice button. Now we have an option to basically have a quicker way to link your apps. Here we got uh, Hulu and Prime Video. Real easy, gave me a barcode, scanned it with my phone and it immediately signed me in. Pretty nice. Now let's move on. If you want to take your viewing experience to the next level, you can go ahead and click enable now. Just so you know, I clicked enable now. What we are now looking at is Samsung's latest TV operating system. Now it's going to take some getting used to, so let's just take a look at the layout. Here you can see that we have all my downloaded apps, the ability to get more apps at the end there. Also, as you go down, you can see what you recently were doing. Got my PlayStation 5 on there and then on now. The cool thing about this is everything that essentially you use on this and as you use it, it gets better and better, will give you recommendations. So if we click down and here we can see, I don't know what this movie is, but PI, you can see where we can watch it for free. So there's always, you know, movies on here that's free and this recommendation system should get better the more things you watch. So everything is essentially here. But to get to the settings and things that we use most, what you're gonna to wanna to do is scroll over to the left side there. And once we do that, you should see media, ambient, search, and then of course, menu. Let's start with menu. Once I click menu, you can see we have settings, connected devices, and multi-view. Now it jumped me right over to my PlayStation 5. Okay, so there's two ways that you need to adjust your picture settings. And this is something that took me a little bit to get used to. You have your quick settings toggle and then you have your full settings. So when we click on all settings, we are now greeted with our typical menu that you can essentially change everything with. So we're going to stay here for a moment. Here we're going to go over to our picture settings. Now it's on PlayStation 5 on, so it says game, but first thing, you have your picture size settings and then you have your expert. Now, once under expert is where you can adjust contrast, brightness, sharpness, color, tint. And then again, if you're not in game mode, you're going to have more options here. And we're going to go over all of my calibrated settings in the next video, but I'm just giving you a look because what's important here is you're not going to access essentially the last half of these in your quick settings when you're watching something. So honestly, it could be better placed and I hope in future software updates, it, it gets a little bit better. Next, we have sound. You can go to sound output. You got your expert settings here. You can turn on your Dolby Atmos, the um, optical output. This is a new feature where you can output um, an optical source at the same time as something else. So that's very cool. If you have an old sound bar, you can hook them up both together. Again, we'll look at that more in the next video. And then we back out again and we go to our connections. Here, you can do your network, set it up, external device settings or external device manager and game mode settings are here and your Apple AirPlay. So external device is where your HDMI CEC is, your input signal plus, your HDMI black levels, your input device manager, and your device connect manager. Quick note, I recommend turning HDMI CEC on and turning input signal plus on all four. 
and just wanted to let everybody know because this is sort of an untalked about things in the specifications, but I am able to get um, 4K at 120 frames per second with all four HDMIs with the input signal plus two on. So to me, that tells me that they're all HDMI 2.1s, but I've been, been unable to see anything online that says that. But again, they all work and work flawlessly, so they have got to be. Next section, game mode settings. This is gonna be really important for some of you. You have your game mode where you can turn it auto, on or off. And then you have your surround sound specifically for the 3D based surround sound for gameplay, dynamic black enhancer, game motion plus, and then of course your HDR tone mapping, which you have HDR 10 plus gaming, um, being able to game in HDR, and you have the ability to change this from basic, advanced, or off, depending. Next, you have your broadcasting options, auto program, data serve um, service, if you Data service, do not track private browsing and to delete your browsing history, you can take care of that all here. Serv service provider, um, your service providers, info and settings, and then again, your secure channel viewing is all here. Um, next, we have our general and privacy. So we have our accessibility here. Now this is, you know, a lot of adjustments. You have your voice guide settings, your audio descriptions, captions, you could see it all here. You also, this is a very helpful, have to learn your TV remote, um, learn the positions of the buttons on your TV remote. Once enabled, your TV will tell you the name of the buttons that you press. This is great when you're getting to know something that you've never owned before. Um, then it also has the learn the menus. This will help you also. Um, it does have the feature to shut the picture off. For those of you that don't know what this is for, let's just say you're using your TV to listen to an audio. You only care about the audio. Maybe you're watching the news or you're listening to music. You can actually shut the picture off and still be able to hear the audio. Um, you have graphic zoom, so you can enlarge the screen, make this look um, bigger and then you can adjust that zoom level. You have the multi-audio output, which is an awesome feature, high contrast, um, enlarge, and then of course we have our remote button repeat. This is something that you can adjust depending on how you like your remote settings to be. Terms and privacy, you pretty much know what that is, I'm sure. Intelligent mode settings. Now this is something that's sort of up to you if you wanna use or not. Um, when it's on, and depending on what you're using, um, especially if you're using the just the sound itself from the TV, you're going to have your sound. Um, if you use a Samsung sound bar or surround sound, you're going to have more options. Also, you have your adapted, adaptive picture, eye comfort mode settings, active voice amplifier, adaptive sound plus, and adaptive volume. If you need to adjust your voice settings or change your voice assistant, you can do that here. Next, you have your system manager where you can set up time, language, your Samsung account, change your PIN, and then change the usage mode. You have parental settings, so you can lock programming if you have kids, power and energy savings. Um, this has a lot of different features here. I'm really not into these, but if you are, you can turn all of this on or off. Um, I always um, put the auto power to four hours just in case it's left on. And then you also can see the battery life on your remote, which is nice. If you want to adjust your start screen, screen option, that's done here. This is, you know, if you're watching Netflix as an example, you can have it automatically turn right back onto Netflix when you turn your TV on. And because this TV has such a great processor and it, it's instantaneous, um, some of the older models I had would really, it would take a bit to load up, but you don't have to worry about that with this one as long as you have good Wi-Fi or good internet in your home. So you can auto run your smart hub or not. Last app, multi-view mirroring, uh, multi-view casting, and then the um, auto multi-view when rotating. Next, if you have any issues, you did the settings wrong, you just wanna start all over, you have your reset option right here under general and privacy, kind of a weird place, but that's where it is. Last section here, we have the support category. Here you, you can do your software updates, you can do your device care, connection guide, remote control guide, you have the built-in e-manual, um, you have remote management if Samsung needs to log in your TV and help you fix, 
And then about this TV, you can get all the software and TV serial number and all that good stuff. I jumped back over to device care, just wanted to show you this very quickly. You know, you got to think of TVs nowadays almost like a computer or even a phone or tablet. Sometimes you want to clear out the RAM, make sure everything's um, going right. You could just take care of that right here, hit start device care. You can have everything closed in the background. It's really nice if you're having any lag issues, which I have not had on this TV whatsoever, but it's nice to have the option to clear everything out. If you're having problems, it will also tell you what you can do to fix it. Once complete, you will see the good symbol and you can see it gives me a couple recommendations here, but when you're done, just click done. Now we are on, let's just say, I'm just leaving it on this game menu here for sake of copyright. Now you're in a game or you're watching a movie or whatever it might be and you want to make quick adjustments. Well, on your one remote, you're actually just going to hit the settings icon. Once you hit the settings icon, you have two modes. It is standard on this mode. So for a while there, I was thinking, what's going on? So if you notice the little arrows up and down, what you do is hit up or down depending on where you're at and you'll have these quick settings. Now in the quick settings, you have the ability only to switch intelligent mode on and off. If you want to dig in and, you know, put what you want it to be intelligent about, you need to do that in the men main menu, excuse me. You also have your ability to switch to your game mode. You have your picture setup. We'll go all the way over just so we could see everything here. We have your sound bar or speakers. You can um, flip through whatever you have connected to Bluetooth. You can change your game mode from auto to on to off right here also, which is nice. And then last thing we're going to look at, we got our color tone, um, picture clarity, um, your audio, and then your power saving here and your um, sleep timer, caption, input device is all there. But what we're going to do is back up real quick. And this is all you're gonna see if you want to adjust the picture. You get brightness, contrast, sharpness, color, and tint. That is it. Again, if you want to get all of the adjustments, you're going to have to go ahead and hit the um, all settings right here. Once you hit all settings, it pulls this menu up for you. So again, you have your quick settings that's gonna pull you to this bar here. Don't forget about the very first option, all settings. Press it and you have everything available to you. Go ahead and jump back out. Press the home button. We're back in the main menu area. First, I wanna show you, we got search up here. Anything you're looking for, you can search it here. Movies, TV shows, ambient mode and more. That's very nice. Also, you can use your voice once you set that up. Next, we're going to talk about the ambient mode. This is something Samsung came up with many years ago. It's such a great feature and they take it to the next level with this TV. Go ahead and click on the ambient mode. Ambient mode is more or less a way to make your TV more than just a hanging slab of black on your wall. You can change your TV into something to help you relax. You can change it into a photo of your family or yourself. You can have all kinds of different modern de designs, NFTs. I mean, it's like they got it all now. And what's great about this TV, you can buy more or they just load you up with all kinds of different things. So we have our favorites here. We'll just kind of, this is anything that you pick as your favorite. Um, they have their special editions. And really these things are just beautiful when they're up and I'll show you a couple examples, but for now, let's just do some quick um, flip through here. So here you can see, we can got even more to choose from fireplace. Looks like something that would be good during, I don't know, Halloween, Thanksgiving. And it's just like, they just load you up. All right. Then you got the, my album, you got your dynamic filters um, again, these things here, you can add photos of yourself and they'll be laid out like that or your family. You can make calendars and again, you can edit these and we will go over this more in part two. Um, but again, these are something that can be left up. They look like a photo and uh, really are just beautiful. Now, anything like this with the mat, actually, let's take a look at this. As you can see, this looks like a painting 
probably not coming across as good as it does in real life, but it actually looks like it was painted on there. I showed you this because this is more of just kind of that stagnant image that give, you could just leave on. You can also set smart things to where you walk in the room with your um, Samsung Galaxy phone and it knows you're there and it automatically turns on, but these all can be adjusted in several ways. Now, anything you choose, you can view the details. If you like a particular one and you want it in your favorites, all you gotta do is click the little heart um, and then you can edit and then adjust, right? So the edit is where you can change the photo. Um, there's tons of different ones. If you wanna just see some of them here. And again, it's just about having your own unique taste and just the options and as this program has expanded, it's just gotten more and more. So it's just great to have at least, at very least available. Also, if you just click select and we go to the screen, you can adjust the brightness, saturation, color tone, red tone, green tone, and blue tone. Now, again, this is not going to be the same settings as your TV completely separate. So no matter what you have that set to, it's not going to affect the way this looks. And I'm talking about your main settings when we're in the TV mode. Next level, we have the Q collection. Now these are just really cool to have up on your screen. They definitely will get your guest asking, what is that? Um, some of my favorite, they're just very vivid and they just make your TV look so cool when it's just hanging on the wall or even on a stand, it really doesn't matter. What's interesting about these, the camera's not gonna show you what it really looks like, unfortunately, but it's almost when you keep them a little dim, it looks like it's a real photo or painting. I mean, if you have that no gap wall mount, I mean, some people might even think this is a photo frame. It's that good, especially on these 8K panels, gorgeous. And then when we keep going down, we get into the mood and relaxation. Now, as an example, the butterfly, it will actually fly around your TV. So even though it's a sort of a still image, the butterflies, it's almost as if they're alive. I'm trying to give you, I know it looks weird on the camera, but the butterflies look literally like they're locked in a glass case. It's that good. So we got water, sand, spring. Then we can go to just overall decor. These have been around for a while. These are really cool. Um, I really like this one here. So again, it's sort of that 3D picture, if you would. You got that steel image and then you have these sort of floating balls and it looks as if they're behind glass and they're really floating in front of you. It's just really cool. Next category, we have the info. So you have different weather clocks. Um, this is great if you are trying to keep track of time or you have a business meeting or whatever it might be. They just give you a bunch of different options. Next, we have artwork. This again, it's just like limitless things to choose from, um, beautiful photos that you can leave up. One of my fav favorites is these Alps waterfalls. Quick look at that. Wouldn't mind being there right now, that's for sure. Then we have our background themes. Now these are just standard colors. And again, they have just about any one of them. And uh, this can just keep the back of your TV screen this color at all times. So if you're using like a calendar, you can have a sky blue background. So again, it gives you pretty much every color you can think of. Next, we have our routines. Enjoy a range of specially designed routines. Um, again, you can set this all up. You can create your own. They have already some preset ones. You know, as an example, going to bed, you want something to relax, you can have a routine going. Another just cool thing that Samsung thought of that actually turns out to be pretty useful. Um, you also have last here your ambient screen options. Auto brightness can be turned on and off. And then you can also like if you're going to go to bed and relax and you fall asleep, you can have it where it shuts off for you automatically. So that's nice. So really at the end of, end of it all, it's just a extra added benefit 
to the Samsung TVs, and it's just something that you really don't know what you're missing until you have it, but I love it. I talk about this a lot in my videos. It's all about ecosystem. It's, you know, we don't always do this, often we don't, but as an example, I have Samsung TVs, I wanna own a Samsung phone. Well, why is that? And it's because when you really start to build around the ecosystem, you get all these really neat features that make your life easier. Often we just intermix all different brands and types of products, and that's fine if you're not really trying to get into that modern day, if you would, tech help. One of the benefits um, that I like. I love Samsung Health. I, I use, you know, their smartwatches, can't even see it in this right now, but uh, their phones, and then you can link it all together. So if you have workout or nutritional goals, it's nice that you have them right on your TV. But what's nice is it's not just about your personal numbers. Samsung has this whole ecosystem where they give you workouts that you can start your morning with, um, and you can line it up with your fitness goals. So I just like that it's all together and it's all about getting more for your dollar and I really believe that you get more for your dollar here by getting these things included with essentially your TV or your Samsung Smart um, Health app, um, smart trainers and anything like that that's just on your TV, you know, it is really neat to me. And it appears as if you can see here, you can use the camera. Here you can use your watch. So it lets you know what device interlinks with essentially that particular um, category, like smart trainer. Um, so it's just really neat. And I'll just go through this real quick. You have your premium workouts, um, one workout away, blah, 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 premium extra mile. And then you can also browse the categories here. Um, cardio, dance, I mean, it's just, this TV is just loaded. I mean, you really just can't hate on Samsung for just giving you this stuff um, to better your life. Just quickly, just going through. So yoga, stretch, strength. So pretty much every category that I can think of is here. Um, train with a camera. This is how you would set that up here. Um, we have connect mobile, link health, set up health, begin challenges, connect with Galaxy. So as you can see, you can link your actual Samsung products with this to better it. And then here are the health apps that are available. Let's see how far they go here. This is all of them, so they fit. And again, there might be more in the app market to download, but this, I didn't download any. This was just already here, so pretty cool. Since this is the first video, I definitely wanted to cover most specifications for those of you that would like. I will go as quick as possible. Let's begin. This is for bezel-less type bezel type, type stand, connected stand. The design is called Infinity One. This is an ultra slim stainless steel. The screen size is 75 inches and the resolution is 7680 by 4320. The color is 100% color volume with quantum dot technology. This features HDR, quantum HDR 32X. Ultra viewing angle, this features film mode, adaptive picture with optimized eye comfort, HLG or hybrid log gamma, the contrast is Quantum Matrix Technology Pro that features Ultimate 8K Dimming Pro Micro Dimming. This does have the Real Depth Enhancer for the Contrast Enhancer. This does feature Auto Motion Plus and LED Clear Motion. This is certified HB HDR10 Plus Adaptive HDR10 Plus Gaming. The picture engine is a neutral quantum processor 8K and the motion technology is the Motion Accelerator Turbo Plus. This does have a anti-reflection coating and it does a spectacular job so far. This features Dolby Audio. The sound output is 70 watts. This does have a woofer. Speaker type is 4.2.2 channel. This does have a multi-room link. Q sympathy, or symphony, sorry, Q symphony, sympathy. Active voice amplifier, Bluetooth audio. This does have a Dolby 5.1 decoder for 5.1 channel and dual audio support through Bluetooth. 
This does feature the latest and greatest form of Wi-Fi, that is Wi-Fi 6E, that stands for enhanced. This does feature Wi-Fi Direct and Bluetooth 5.2, so that's great. As far as the features, we have AI upscale. We have Bixby and Google as long as, as well as Alexa, excuse me. This has ambient mode plus. It features the attachable slim one connect box. It has a eco sensor, TV mobile to mirroring, mobile to TV mirroring with DLNA. This does support smart things, far field voice interaction, Samsung TV plus, this does have a full featured web browser. It does have a 360 video player, 360 camera support, and we know we can use that with our workout app there, so that's awesome. Definitely easy setup. This features app casting, wireless TV on Samsung Wow, wireless TV on Samsung WOL also. This features low energy Bluetooth, TV sound to mobile, sound mirroring, adaptive sound plus, brightness color detection, instant on, voice guide, accessibility, learn TV remote, learn menu screen, we looked at that. And then we have auto channel search, auto power off, caption and subtitle, connect share HDD, connect share USB 2.0, embedded pop, EPG, this does feature free sync Premium Pro, Filmmaker Mode, IP Control, OSD Language is English, Spanish, and French, BT HID Support, USB HID Support, this has a V-chip, MBR Support, IPv6 Support, Tap View, Auto Game Mode, Wireless Dex, Object Tracking Sound is OTS Plus, Multi View, Music Wall, Game Motion Plus, Dynamic Black EQ, Surround Sound, Super Ultra Wide Game View, Game Bar, 9x16 Screen Support, IoT Hub, Smart Calibration, Basic and Professional, Web, ser web Service, excuse me, is Microsoft 365. As far as Versa Standard, the screw size is M8, screw depth is 5.6, Versa Spec is 400 by 300. Here we have our game mode, and honestly, this is one of the coolest features. So here you can see we can adjust our input lag. We can adjust the game settings. Here you can see we have standard RPG, RTS, FPS, sports, and custom. You can also um, switch your screen aspect ratio, excuse me. Um, and again, you can do this all on the fly, depending on what system you're using and what game you're playing. You can have up to 120 frames per second. Of course, HDR and VRR is included, um, but you just have this quick toggle game settings and based on the game you're playing will allow you to, you know, take your TV and the system to its max. And again, to be clear, yes, true 120 frames per second. This is a 120 hertz native panel. However, you can game up to 144 hertz. We'll get into that more in part two. Just wanted to give you a quick look at this and also let you know as far as multi-view mode, you can watch up to four at once. Um, and again, this is a mini LED Q LED TV price points differ starts at 65 inches at 3500 and then of course this one that we're looking at now is a 75 inch that goes for 47 and then the 85 inch goes for 6500 so of course this will not be my full review as this is my first video but that definitely will come in the series However, I sort of wanted to give you my first impressions about this TV. First, let me say the build quality is superb. Beautiful, you know, of course, the front vivid, beautiful screen. We got the sides, that chrome look with the, the sort of mesh holes, if you would. And then the back, you got those nice speakers there all nicely aligned on each side. Um, by the way, when you are listening to the TV from the TV speakers itself, 
it's pretty cool how you can hear the sounds coming out of different spots of the back of the TV. And of course, that definitely helps with the immersion. One connect box. It again, it, the presentation is there. It's just on point with everything. Beautiful one connect box. I love the slim profile. I like how they have that um, sort of shell look on there and then you can kind of match it all together to blend in nicely. The stand itself that it comes with, I like it. Um, it gives it that sort of floating tilted look, but plenty of space to put a good sound bar underneath. Um, all in all, great as far as the way the TV looks and sounds. Now, the picture quality, I have to say, out of the box, one of the best TVs I have ever seen. I've been to CES, I've seen many, many TVs. I gotta tell you, I feel as if, you know, the 800 is the TV to buy this year. The 900, the QN900B, of course, is better, but at a several thousand dollars more, I don't know if it's something that we can actually see. In other words, that we can actually pick up on, and I'm pretty picky. So, the picture quality is outstanding. Deep, dark, blacks, the mini LEDs make a huge difference, and it's really getting to the point where I don't even, yeah, OLED obviously will always probably have the best blacks, but having said that, I don't know that I can even see the difference anymore. And then you get this bright, vivid, punchy TV, and it is just delightful. Next, gaming. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to do my gaming videos. This is the best gaming TV um, at this price point, of course. The 900, of course, is going to be better in all the specifications. But again, I was able to get... And this isn't um, listed in the specs, so I'm not sure why. But I tried on every... Um, HDMI, I can get 120 frames per second through my HDMI 2.1 port. It worked on HDMI 1, 2, 3, or 4. So um, Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, get ready to game your lights out. Their gaming screen where you can change the input lag, um, the frames, all right there nice and quick with the one remote is just awesome. Um, other than that, the only thing I can say that is... yeah. It's not that I don't like it, it's definitely taking some getting used to and that's their new operating system. But once you got it down, and I, I went through it in this video of course, but it does start to make sense. But it is something that was sort of shell shock at first and I'm sure with software updates that's gonna get better and better. First thing I recommend doing, get a professional calibration if you want. Um, also, we're going to go over my settings and we'll go over some features that I didn't talk about in this video and that's because we're going to talk about them more in another video. But you can do a calibration with some of the newer Samsung devices. That's something that a lot of you are going to want. But all in all, if you're wondering, hey JB Tech Fanatic, you haven't done your full review yet. Should I get this TV? I don't know. Should I wait for this? Wait for that? I can tell you right now today, absolutely, go get this TV. You are going to be stunned. Movies, um, streaming, um, even dish, regular content, sports, gaming, everything looks stunning on this TV. So far, it literally gives me chills. It's a great, great TV. I'm just gonna go ahead and let this record so that you can kind of get an idea what it looks like. I'm not gonna stand in front or have any lighting. This is the demo mode. Obviously, it's hard to show you a lot of content due to copyright problems, but this is just gorgeous. And I just wanted you to see the deep dark blacks, the vivid colors. Um, again, this is a 75 inch TV. I am not seeing any light bleed. I'm really not seeing any of the normal problems that you run into with LED LCD. I'm not saying that anything's perfect, of course, but really it's just stunning. Even standing up close, you're just getting this beautiful, gorgeous, bright, vivid, and detailed image at all times. Let's take a closer and quick look at the One Remote. Now, the One Remote, so you know if you don't know already, 
This remote can control everything that's connected to your TV via HDMI CEC. Now, it's so slim and streamlined, it appears as if you can't do much with it. But this will control your game console, either PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, your Blu-ray player, or anything connected, your dish box. And what's really cool is, is we have Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Prime Video, and then Samsung TV+. Plus. Those are quick toggles to get to those streaming services. And what's nice is that this TV is such a great processor. It does that so quick and snappy. Now you have your quick settings and toggle here. You have sort of that push trackpad if you would. They do something very unique by having a solar panel on the back to charge it. So really if you have a you know, sun coming in through the window, it's gonna charge your remote. Otherwise you have USB type C, but I love this remote. I actually prefer this remote over any other remote and I've used it for years. And they, you know, the form factor stayed the same. They added the solar uh, a couple years back, maybe a one or two years ago. But as far as it being able to control everything, that's been pretty much its take, but they add and change different quick toggles. But again, I highly encourage you to try this remote out. We're now gonna take a quick look at a little gaming sample. Just wanted to also point out multi-view. As you can see, multi-view, you can actually add two things together. I put game and the internet. When you click it, you get this pretty cool two windows at once, and you can actually change them to do different things. When you click, as you can see, you can scroll through, change screen size, set picture in picture, listen to the sound from two separate sources, which is kind of cool, um, connect a Bluetooth speaker, delete the screen, and then exit to full screen. You can kind of see I made that one bigger. You have your options over here also. All right, so here we have PlayStation 5. Again, this is just a quick look. The gameplay is so smooth and it's just gorgeous. Of course, this is a beautiful game too. And then right here, all I have to do is press my one remote play button and it pops up my gaming menu which is great you can change your input lag but as you can see everything is just vivid and smooth all right let's jump on over to xbox series x so now we have our xbox series x as you can see our fps HDR is on, FreeSync Premium, VRR, and again, we can click over here on our settings and we can change quickly to whatever you prefer. And what's nice is it's not too intrusive to the game, it's sort of on the bottom there. And then you just have this supreme gaming experience. If you have a PC, also this TV makes an outstanding PC monitor. And what's great about it is you can get pretty much any kind of monitor out of one TV from ultra wide to standard. It doesn't matter. All can quickly be changed with a quick toggle. Right now we're in 16 by nine, of course. Just look at that beauty. Do the spin test. You won't see anything lagging behind or dragging. The TV keeps up with ease. But don't worry, we're gonna look at way more games all my settings 
in one of my next videos. We will do a gaming, I'll do a separate Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 so you can maximize each one. That pretty much wraps up part one on the all new Samsung 8K 75 inch QN800B. Now we're gonna do probably two or three more videos. I will go ahead and cover all of my personal calibrated picture settings, sound settings. We're gonna go over gaming. So hopefully at the end of this series, you will know everything you need to maximize your experience with this TV. As always, I'd like to slow things down and remind you life is so short. Don't forget to love your family, love your neighbors, go out today and do a small act of kindness for someone. The world is a mess right now and the only people that can change it is you and I. I also want to remind you that I do YouTube for you and you only. So if you need me, you can come follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, at JB Tech Fanatic. You can also reach out to me in the comment section. If I can help you in any way, I would be glad to try. Don't forget, if you have not subscribed yet, I'd be so honored if you would. And if you want to know when those videos are going to come up, be sure to turn those notifications to on. But I can't wait to see you in the next video and talk to you in the comments. And until then, I'm JB Tech Fanatic, and I'm out. Peace.